first formal GIA presence in this area was in 1959 when they established the Kimmacud GIA Club. Its role was never just to be to promote Gaelic games, but it was also to promote social and recreational activities and to provide um, a, a place for all groups within the community to come together. Kimmacud Croaks itself is the result of an amalgamation between the Kimmacud club that was established in 1959 and the Croaks Hurling Club, uh, which is one of the oldest hurling clubs in Dublin in 1966, and it met with immediate success. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, before we start our hurling, we're missing something. What are we missing? Our hurlies. A big part of, of what we try and do in the club is, is be a part of the community. So a lot of my work involves promoting Kilmco Croaks and Gaelic games in the local schools. So this morning we were, we were with a senior infant class and giving them a flavour of what Gaelic games is about with the plan of maybe recruiting some, some players uh, to get involved in, in Kilmco Croaks. If a pair does bring the child up to the Crokes for the first time, it's obviously it, it's their first introduction to the club also. And we get parents who are looking to get involved in, in, in GEA coaching to have a, a, a foundation and work course completed. And from that then, it gives them just some of the skills and some of the knowledge if, if they're going to go coaching. Maybe that, that we help to empower the parents, empower the coaches, so they become self-sufficient. Kimmacud's growth hasn't been by accident. Obviously, once you go and establish and formalise links with all the local schools, once you establish a, a really strong underage section, you're going to have more people coming into your club. Now that creates obvious challenges in terms of providing facilities for teams and players, uh, and also it puts a huge strain on volunteerism. But they're far better problems to have than the alternative. Five years ago, we had to inform parents that now, as a club, we were a community. So when you joined the club, you joined as a family. We didn't allow children under 18 to join by themselves. So it was a huge change in ethos. We had a lot of kind of challenge around why should I have to join a club with my child, especially if they were used to dropping their child here on a Saturday morning and driving away. We were saying, no, we're not. It's a community club. Everybody does it automatically now. It's assumed, it's a, it's a matter of pride actually in the club now that we don't take in children, you know, without their parents. It's challenging in the numbers. We have 130 teams with five and a half thousand members. You know, it, it is challenging.